Disney's Hercules is a thrilling retelling of one of ancient mythology's most iconic stories about one of their strongest heroes. Despite being released over two decades ago, the movie still holds strong by today's standards. And given the fact that these characters stem from classic storytelling that broke down all sorts of human emotion, as well as good and evil, it makes sense that the Disney version of the story would explore morality in a deep way as well. So, as usual, we'll be taking all of these characters and trying to figure out where they fall on the spectrum of good to evil. Think you know which characters are good? Which ones are evil? Sometimes it's not as obvious as it seems. What are those? First on our list are the much-loved fan favorites, the Muses. Not only does Hercules have an incredible soundtrack, even by Disney film standards, due to the excellent casting choices for the Muses, for example, Won't Say I'm In Love and Zero to Hero, but they also provide much needed wholesome commentary for the movie. It would be impossible to rank Calope, Cleo, Thalia, Terpsichore, and Melpomene separately, seeing as they're rarely shown as anything other than a five-person act. But our gut tells us that they're all pretty well-rounded individuals. One of their most famous songs, I Won't Say I'm In Love, is a testament to their good nature. With their a bit nosy help, Megara comes a little closer to accepting that she may be in love with Hercules all despite her protests to the contrary. Considering Megara's tumultuous love life thus far, it's nothing short of a good deed to help her on her way to finding true happiness, as well as true love with the movie's protagonist. The muses are also benevolent to the viewer, filling us in on the happenings prior to the events of the movie where Zeus and Hera lose Hercules to mortality. If you don't remember studying ancient Greece in school, it's a handy recap. Actually, not really. The Disney recap totally deviates from the original mythology. Next up, we have the adopted parents of Hercules, Amphitryon and Alchemini. For a quick recap of the story for those who may have forgotten, Alphitryon and Alchemini found Hercules after pain and panic, Hades' henchmen, Zeus is gonna use this for dark and practice, robbed him from Mount Olympus. They succeeded in making him a mortal human. Here you go, kid! A little Christian formula! But failed in the process to remove his inhumane strength. Yo, give it here! Which set him apart from his peers. However, despite the baby not being theirs, having basically been abandoned on their doorstep, and Hercules being a considerable challenge, becoming a social pariah due to his troublesome strength, he just can't control his strength. The two do their best to raise him as any good parents would. Even after an embarrassing incident in the village at the start of the movie, where Hercules' strength destroys the marketplace, you keep that, that, that freak away from here! And he's labeled a freak. Son, you shouldn't let those things they said back there get to you. Amphitryon stands by him and tells him not to worry about what people think of him. They even decide to bite the bullet and tell Hercules about the circumstances of his arrival on Earth, allowing him to start his hero's journey and discover where he came from. Surprise! Something many parents may have opted against for fear their child would leave. It's all for the best though, with Hercules telling them that they're the best parents he could have asked for before leaving. Uh, Pop. You're the greatest parents anyone could have. Ultimately, it's hard to find anything less than wholesome about these two. After all, there's nothing better than great parents. And now for our hero himself, Hercules. Personality-wise, Hercules is known for his compassion. I wish to stay on Earth with her. I finally know where I belong. <laughs> and occasional naive behavior. Despite all the bullying of his childhood, he remains a hopeful and optimistic person throughout his teen years, even when it all comes to a head and he's left wondering if he truly belongs anywhere. He's more than happy to go back and help the same people who mocked him once he's become a successful hero. That's Phil's point. He shows a complete and total lack of spite and vengeance that is actually pretty uncommon with a lot of protagonists and it's a refreshing take. Phil. You gotta admit, that was pretty heroic. Something else uncommon about him is that even when he becomes confident in himself and his abilities, he remains a nice and approachable guy. As the muses say, he was riding high and the nicest guy not conceited. 
Now, this last part might be a bit of a stretch, but towards the climax of the movie... I mangled the Minotaur, grappled with the Gorgon! If not in any unexpected way, he believes that he's reached the pinnacle of what it means to be a hero. The day I rejoin the gods. And becomes agitated when Zeus tells him that he hasn't reached it just yet, despite him saving Greece multiple times, gaining control over his powers. However, it's his true act of selflessness in sacrificing his own life and soul for Meg's. You like making deals? Take me in Meg's place. That earns him godhood in the end, and no one can argue he doesn't deserve it. Next up on our list is Pegasus. Now, I know what you're thinking. One, Pegasus is a horse, and two, could a horse be anything other than the least evil on this list? Ow. And may possibly frustrate some mythological animal rights activists. But for a horse... He's a magnificent horse with the brain of a bird. Pegasus is surprisingly personified and is capable of a wide range of emotions, not least of all, jealousy and spite. Yes, he's fiercely protective of Hercules hold, hold on. He's gotta do it on his own. and can quickly become vengeful with those he deems to harbor ill will towards him. When Phil refuses to help Hercules initially in the film's climax, Pegasus shoots him a glare severe enough to scare him into submission. He's also envious of Meg, but his issue appears to stem not from the fact that Meg poses a threat to Hercules, being an accomplice of Hades, but simply because he's jealous of the love-struck attention Hercules is giving her. When in Thebes, no, I He takes advantage of her fear of heights by flying at a purposefully high speed to scare the hell out of her. Are you okay? I'll be fine. Just get me down before I ruin the upholstery. That's actually pretty cruel and terrifying. But as Hercules' best friend, Pegasus has a heart of gold too, showing deep friendship for Hercules from the crib to the battlefield, even after years apart. He's also shown to change his mind about Meg when she gets onto his good side and earns his affection. So a naughty horse at times, but overall a good and loyal pet without a doubt. Hera was a difficult character to rank in Hercules. as her character is significantly different in the Disney adaptation than it is in nearly every other understanding of Greek mythology. In the movie, she is shown as Hercules' caring and dotting mother, Mind his head. who worries for his safety and is significantly upset at his kidnapping. Ultimately, she's portrayed as any mother should be when her son is kidnapped, made mortal, and given to strangers while she's forced to watch his life from afar. She's definitely a good character. However, it would disregard all common understanding of Greek mythology to stop there. After all, in original mythology, she hates Hercules with a burning passion. Look how cute he is. <laughs> Him actually being Zeus's illegitimate child as opposed to her own and incites the initial attempts to kill him herself. She sent a snake to kill him as an infant, something that was incorporated into the film but attributed to Pain and Panic instead. She was also the real instigator behind Hercules' 12 trials. Now, full disclosure, we're not holding any of this stuff against her in the context of our list because it wasn't included in the Disney movie, but we wanted to mention it because it is interesting. Zeus is up next on our list, and again, great character in the Disney movie, a great dad. <laughs> Boy, my little Hercules. A big smile and a worthy ruler. I want to thank you all for your wonderful gifts. Not only is he wise, you want to slow down, you work yourself to death. But he's also fun. Work yourself to death. <laughs> <laughs> which is why we've ranked him where he is. After all, he protects Hercules throughout the film. Now, watch your old man work. And he rules Olympus with maturity and fairness. 
After all, it's not like he's the same character from the original mythological story. Full disclosure, again, we aren't holding any of this against him on our list because we're only ranking the Disney version. But similarly to Hera's placement, anyone who remembers Greek mythology knows why Zeus wasn't so great. In the original stories, Zeus is pretty much considered a character of bad morals who cheats on his wife and straps Prometheus to a rock and allows birds to eat his liver for the sin of allowing mortals to have fire. However, in the Disney adaptation, he's rarely shown to be angry except when his infant is kidnapped. and even seems predominantly benevolent, such as his willingness to overlook Hades' previous attempts to overthrow Olympus for the sake of letting bygones be bygones. So Hades, you finally made it. How are things in the underworld? However, even in this version, I suppose you could argue that he's an irresponsible father who allows his child to play with lightning and subsequently get electrocuted. So think of that what you will. Just because you're a god doesn't mean you should skip the parenting books. Oh, he won't hurt himself. Let the kid have a little fun. Honestly, Zeus should have signed up for Audible, the sponsor of today's video. Get yourself a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial membership by going to audibletrial.com forward slash wicked binge. With an unmatched library of content, you can binge audiobooks like you do cartoons until you have the brains of a god. And you'll be supporting our channel in the process. Download your free audiobook and your free 30-day trial today at audibletrial.com forward slash wicked binge. Moving on, our damsel not in distress and femme fatale rolled into one, Megara, is up next. An atypical love interest for a Disney film, she's rather cynical and world-weary. Well, you know how men are. They think no means yes and get lost means take me, I'm yours. Which is actually pretty refreshing. Not sure why Disney has swept her character under the rug recently. Aww, how cute. A couple of rodents looking for a theme park. But as far as the pessimism, who could really blame her? She's become indebted to Hades after she's offered him up her soul in exchange for her then boyfriend's life, only for her boyfriend to turn around and leave her for another woman. That is pretty cold. She naturally has a reluctance to open her heart to anyone again, let alone Hercules, but finds herself slowly falling for his charm anyway. Now, it would be easy to mark Meg as an anti-hero or an accomplice in Hades' plans. After all, she does serve as bait in Hades' many attempts to get rid of Hercules. There was this rock slide, a terrible rock slide. They're trapped. Including tricking him into believing two children were stuck under a rock and putting him in the the path of a dangerous beast, which he defeated of course. She also agrees to seduce Hercules and find out his weakness for Hades to manipulate. No weaknesses whatsoever. Only in the process she realizes she's falling in love with him and then refuses to research any further. Then read my lips. Forget it. Claiming that he has no weakness at all. Sadly, in the process, I think he does, Meg. I truly think he does. She reveals to Hades that she herself has become Hercules' weakness and is further used as bait. Meg! Don't listen to her! However, though all of these actions clearly make her complicit in some way or another with Hades' plans, it's hard to not feel sorry for her and it's hard to blame her too much. After all, with Hades having her soul, she's bound by her end of the bargain that she made as a love-struck teenager, and despite all that, she makes the morally right decision in the end. Hercules, look out! All in all, there are definitely worse deeds that have been done for less. And Meg has paid for her sins and then some. People always do crazy things <laughs> when they're in love. Phil is next on our list, and while by no means evil, he definitely has some issues to address. As a hero trainer, he prescribes to a strict regimen of tough love after the last numerous heroes he trained failed humiliatingly in battle. And every single one of those bums let me down, flatter than a discus. Causing him to lose his reputation. He claims none of them could go the distance and pushes Hercules to painful limits to see if he can. 
This appears to stem from an issue he had with his mother growing up, where he felt she complimented his brother's achievements more than Phil's, leading to resentment and a perfectionist attitude. But we're not here to psychoanalyze him, we're just here to rank him on a morality scale. To add, the guy is quick to frustration and has a bit of a temper, becoming angry at others who don't grant him respect or acknowledge him. He pursues beautiful women on his downtime, Nymphs, they can't keep their hands off me. Which is fine, but due to the considerable amount of rejections he receives, And by the way, sweet cheeks, I'm real too. He comes off as a bit creepy about it. Here he goes, on the veranda! However, it should be noted that he has a big heart, and grows to care about Hercules almost like he's family, when he believes that Meg is plotting against him. Medium or well done. Oh, I knew that dame was troubled. This is gonna break the kid's heart. He's quick to warn him for his own safety, even when Hercules rejects his testimony. Shut up! All in all, we'd rank him as good, but rough around the edges, to say the least. Which brings us to our really, really short evil side of the spectrum, starting with pain and panic. It's pretty indisputable that these two are evil. Coming, you most lugubrious nymph! If also extremely stupid, they're Hades' henchmen and commit many of the misdeeds of the film under Hades' strict orders. And they're the ones to initially kidnap Hercules as a baby. Just hang on to the kid, panic! Stealing him from his crib and feeding him a potion that stripped him of his godhood and rendered him mortal. They then tried to transform into snakes and kill the baby, only failing due to Hercules retaining his superhuman strength and beating them up. Hades is gonna kill us when he finds out what happened! I mean, let's be real, trying to kill a baby is some medieval level stuff. Their treachery doesn't stop there. You mean, if he finds out. Of course he's gonna put. If. If is good. And in an admittedly smaller sin, they lie about the whole thing to Hades for years and pretend that Hercules actually was murdered as an infant, instead of being adopted into a local mortal family. They continually serve as bait in Hades' plans, such as posing as two small children trapped under a boulder to hopefully trap and kill Hercules. Stirring performance, boys. And spying on his and Meg's date to make sure she discovered what his weakness is. Get the good, sister. Similarly to Meg, however, these two are also indebted to Hades due to him having captured their souls for undisclosed reasons. However, they're much less sympathetic characters as they seem to have much more of an objection to having to do work than having to, you know, kill a baby. Now, we can't forget about the Fates, the three demonic old hags who share one eye and can see into the future. Darling. Hold that mortal's thread of life good and tight. And who have a thing for ending mortals' lives. In fact, it appears as though they really relish in it. Incoming! They look on at the process with glee. Really, these dark and, frankly, creepy characters seem to represent the dark arts of evil and death. And although they aren't outright allied with Hades, they seem to be just as sadistic. And finally, obviously last on our list, is Hades, the ultimate villain of the series. It's hard to have imagined anyone else managing to top Hades for evilness in this movie, and he remains one of Disney's most successful villains. Fueled by his hatred of Zeus and his inability to match his physical strength, then the once proud Zeus will finally fall. He broods and plots for years on end on how to overthrow Mount Olympia with his cunning and intellect. While usually calm and collected, a sinister form of evil, he is prone to temper. And the one shmeal who can last it up is waltzing around in the world! With his entire head setting aflame when he becomes angry. He enslaves Pain and Panic, and later Megara. Fortunately for the three of you, we still have time to correct this rather egregious oversight. And God knows how many other souls he's collected. 
forcing them to do his dirty work while he plots his evil schemes. However, if there's one positive thing that we can say about him, it's that he always seems to keep his end of the bargain and is surprisingly honest. When he strips Hercules of his strength for 24 hours in exchange for Meg's safety, and Meg is later put in danger. What's happening? Hades' deal is broken. Hercules immediately regains his strength, as Hades couldn't hold this end of the bargain. It's not all that often that we actually see an honest villain in a Disney movie, so we can at least give him some props for that. Here is a sucker for the little sucker. Here you go. You just... <laughs> Even if in every other respect, this guy is certifiably the worst. But do you agree that Hades is the most evil character in Disney's Hercules? Or maybe you're mad that Pegasus wasn't at the top of our good list. Don't forget to check out our full good to evil playlist and let us know which cartoon or movie we should feature next. But most importantly, stay wicked.